Hello friends, in this series of videos in uh, memory management, uh, till now we are discussing contiguous memory allocation and in which uh, I have discussed only one major issue which is what the space allocation policy. So we have understood that contiguous memory allocation can be uh, you can use either fixed size partitioning or variable size partitioning uh, in which we have three standard algorithms in both of them that is either best fit, first fit and worst fit. Now in this video we will discussing the second major issue which is what the address translation that is CPU always generates a logical address now that how that logical address is translated into what physical address okay friends now let's understand how this address translation is done and I'll cover the entire logic in brief but again you see uh, that that logic actually requires some detailed discussion so in some later videos I'll try to cover the I, uh, entire logic uh, which should be discussed now before I actually come to this diagram and we'll discuss this logic let me give you some basic idea you see CPU uh, always generates actually address for what your secondary memory now why is it so as we have discussed in some previous videos the basic concept of memory hierarchy CPU actually interact only with what main memory so CPU hamesha kis se interact karta hai main memory se but secondary memory is there in the background to support what main memory but let me give you a uh, interesting point you know what CPU actually never know even uh, that, that uh, generating uh, the, the units which generate address never know that there is a main memory in the system. So CPU always generates address for what this secondary memory and this address is what logical address. But now we know if CPU access something directly from secondary memory, it will take a lot of time because size of the secondary memory is what very large and the larger the memory, the more will be the access time. Memory jitna bada hoga, usko search karne mein utne zyada time lagega. To CPU understands that whatever in the system could be executed. So CPU generates the address actually for what? Secondary memory. But we know that it will take a lot of time. So what we'll do? We somehow changes this logical address into what? Physical address which can be used to access what? Main memory. So this entire logic works because of locality of reference. So secondary memory is Sara data. Entire data is where? In secondary memory. But which data is important? It is already been placed into what? Main memory. So even CPU never know all about this. CPU still will generate what? Logical address. But we somehow try to understand that which data was important and where it is placed in what main memory and using that information will translate that logical address into what physical letters which will be used which will be used to access what main memory so you conclusion to understand CPU always address who generates address in secondary memory ka why uh, because the, whatever data present in the computer could be executed but uh, if we do so the access time will be very large because secondary memory is a very larger size memory so what we do whatever data is important and how we understand that which data is important according to locality of reference so whatever data currently execute ho raha hota hai, we pick that data and push it into what main memory and then we must tell the machine that where that data is placed because CPU don't have that information we have that information so we translate that logical address into what physical address now that is the main idea now let me tell you uh, you see contiguous memory allocation actually it is a very easy task why because you know if you pick a process from secondary memory and uh, pick uh, and uh, push it into what in main memory then you pick a process in a contiguous fashion so if you know only that base address from which the process is placed you can again decode the entire address but in con non contiguous allocation policy it will be a difficult task to do why because you understand if the process is being partitioned and fragmented into small small partitions in main memory then it is will be very difficult to search the exact address of the process but in contiguous memory allocation it will be easy task why you pick the entire process and push it into what main memory so what you require you just require the base address of the process once you have the base address you just add whatever the pages or instruction you want and you will get what the physical address which can be used to access what main memory okay now let's understand this diagram you see cpu generates a logical address now let me give an example suppose 
uh, that logical letters actually we require a little knowledge of compiler but we'll cover that logic later actually cpu generates what relocatable address so cpu just give uh, like this uh, cpu for example there's a pro uh, program for example uh, let me ignore what is the base address of that program in secondary memory i just say what uh, it, it could be anything I say instruction number one instruction number I I plus one I plus two up till up till instruction number I plus hundred for example so it means what I have let me go for till 99 so we have hundred instructions as a program and it is in relocatable format because the base address the first address is I then let me say I plus one I plus two I plus three up till I hundred now CPU suppose say I want to access instruction number 52 for example now uh, that this data is actually entire process is present in what secondary memory but because of contiguous memory allocation this process is already being placed in what main memory for example let me say this is the area where suppose that particular process p is placed and let me say the base address is what 100 so from the starting address 100 this data is placed and we know because of contiguous memory allocation still in this system also the memory is placed in contiguous fashion now you understand this thing if you know the base address and if you know which element you want to access or which line you want to access like an array so if I give you the base address of an array and if I tell you the size of every instruction or every uh, cell can you compute the address of the 26th element of course you can do that so same logic applies here the entire process you pick from secondary memory to what main memory and now I'll give what the value for example I say I want to access what instruction number 15 52. Now, I know the base address on which the first instruction is placed is what? Instruction number 100 and you want to access what? Instruction number 52. Then of course, it will be somewhere at 152. So what you do? You use this register relocation register. So whatever the logical address comes here, I'll explain this logic later. So whatever the logical address comes here, <coughs> suppose this is 52 you use the value of relocation register now this value is what 100 so what is this relocation register it is a register in the CPU a special purpose register which holds what which holds the address or the base address of the process in the main memory main memory mein process kis base address se store hai ye hum kaha pe likhte hai is relocation register mein so whenever you want to say i want to access x i understand you whatever your x says i'll add the base address into that x so that i get what the exact physical address so for example again suppose if the base address is let me say 500 आपका जो प्रोसेस है वो कहां से स्टोर किया गया है 500 एंड लेट मी से यू वांट टू एक्सेस इंस्ट्रक्शन नंबर 48 सो व्हाट इज द एड्रेस ऑफ दैट इंस्ट्रक्शन 548 बिकॉज़ बेस एड्रेस 500 प्लस 48 इंस्ट्रक्शन 1 2 3 4 5 सो यू विल कम टू व्हाट 48 द एड्रेस विल बी ऑन 548 सो you generate a logical address which is conceptually the instruction number the logical unit which you want to execute now that number is added into what the base register the relocation register which holds the value of the base address of the process where that process is stored in what your main memory and the sum will give you what the physical address so it's a very easy translation process as far as space translation is concerned why because of contiguous memory allocation i just want to know what is the base address and I, then I can automatically compute all the remaining addresses because I know what is the uh, formula or I know how to compute that address in contiguous memory allocation but there's a little bit problem security problem why you see suppose the size of this process is 100 units let me say 100 units take now we know that what system will do system will simply add the value of relocation let me say the base address is what 500 or relocation value so system will do what system will add 500 into whatever address you generate so that you get the actual address but you understand this thing <coughs> if some process either intentionally or unintentionally generates for example a logical address of what 120 first you understand this thing 
the size of the process is what 100 units so maximum if you start indexing from 0 or 1 from 0 you can go to 99 from 1 you can go to what 100 but it says I want to access what 120 so you understand the address is legal or illegal it's an illegal requirement or illegal request why because you have 100 instructions so how the hell you require what instruction number 120 that doesn't make sense but maybe it's by mistake or maybe process intentionally want to do that so that it can get access the data of some other process how you say you give 120 i always at what 500 now 1 500 plus 120 will give me what uh, will give me what 620 so after covering all this logic if you start from 500 you go to what 599 but that 620 will be the space or the address of some other data so of some other process so very easily you can access the space of some other process now that will be a problem so this part is a security mechanism what security mechanism whatever is the limit whatever the size of the process is stored in the limit register let me say uh, the limit of this process is what 100 now it is actually I'm, I have written here less than because it is standard it totally depends on indexing so if you are uh, address or limit is 100 so you can generate addresses from 0 to what 99 yes or no yes so if you generate address for example a request for 50 is 50 less than 100 kya 50 100 se kam hai ha hai hai then there is no problem you can continue and you add 50 into what 500 and automatically you will get an address 550 no problem in that because whatever you want to access it is in the limit very good but uh, suppose somebody wants say I want to access 150 now you actually have what only 100 instructions so you cannot access what 150 so I cannot allow Allow this address to uh, to traverse from here to uh, and and get converted into what a logical physical address and to access the data of some other process so I'll compare is 50 less than 100 answer is no and I'll trap the process so we will take it here so what is the advantage if the process want to access some illegal data or some data which you don't have authority uh, of some other process then we will trap if you are in the limit then you can continue with the translation process I will add the value of the relocation register and then you can go and address what access what physical address so I hope you understand what is the basic idea CPU always generates logical address but because of contiguous memory allocation policy the entire process has been already there in main memory you just want to know what is the base address if you know the base address and you know the instruction number just add that instruction number or base address so that you can go what exact physical address and why this game is so easy because of contiguous memory allocation if you know the base address you can access the entire process in a contiguous fashion why this mechanism is required so that I can check whether whatever you are asking is within your limits or not if it is within not within your limits I'm going to trap you and I cannot allow you to translate otherwise you can simply continue with the normal translation now let me try or let's try a basic numerical on this logic so that I hope you get a better understanding of this logic and then we'll continue with paging Okay friends, let's try a basic question uh, so that you get a better understanding. So it's a table uh, which contains the data for five processes from process P2 to what process P, not for, to process what P4 and have all the basic logics. 500 uh, is the value of the limit register and uh, five, uh, 1200 is the value of relocation register. Uh, what is the limit means what the size of the process in units example either you can say if one instruction is of size one unit then you have 500 instructions and what is the value of relocation register it means what in main memory the base address of the process p0 is what 1200 okay now these are the requests uh, of by the processes respectively and you want to uh, what you have to do you have to find whether the request is legal or illegal now you see process p0 say my limit is 500 and my base address is what 1200 i require to access the instruction number or the address number 450 now you see what is the limit 500 is this value is this required logical address less than the limit yes certainly it is if it is then you can do you can add this 400 into 1200 and the 
the final address will become what 1650 you see it's it's easy logic second you try our limit register is 375 and the required address is what 300 it is a clear-cut illegal request because if your total size is 3275 hai, so you cannot require or you cannot say I want to access the instruction number 300 now that is an illegal request cannot be satisfied next you see limit is 212 and you want to access what 210 no issue in that I can allow so just add this 880 with 210 you will get the final physical address next again you try limit 450 you require for uh, limit 420 uh, you require 450 so you I cannot allow this again it must suspend and the last case you see limit is what <coughs> 118 and you require what 80 so your requirement is less than the limit so it can be allowed and again what will the final address here then just you at the base address which is limit 200 with what 80 so you get the final physical address okay so now i hope that you get a basic idea of that how this translation works and how you get the physical letters from logical letters now uh, let me wind up this logic of contiguous memory allocation and there are some uh, results which we understood there are two major issues of memory man memory wastage one is uh, the internal fragmentation one is external fragmentation you understand internal fragmentation is always uh, not that major issue compared to what the external fragmentation because a lot of space is wasted because of okay so after understanding this translation process from logical address to physical address let me conclude the argument by saying what we have understood from contiguous memory allocation you see there are two major problems in contiguous memory allocation address translation is actually very easy but space wastage is there because one because of external frag fragmentation one because of internal fragmentation in long run what we understood that internal fragmentation is not that severe issue compared to what external fragmentation because of which a lot of space is wasted now now i hope now you understand understand how you translate this logical address into what physical address so now let me conclude the argument by saying in contiguous memory allocation policy space address translation is very easy because the process is in contiguous fashion but what is difficult is how you you know uh, waste memory uh, or how you manage memory efficiently because there are two standard wastage in contiguous memory allocation one is internal fragmentation one is external fragmentation and it is more logical uh, or we understood uh, in a common sense way that external fragmentation is always a major issue compared to what internal fragmentation because internal will be internal to the memory so that will be a small part but external fragmentation occurs in a large number generally so we want to get rid of external fragmentation now external fragmentation we can eliminate the problem by two approaches what is the problem actually process say I want a contiguous space what I have is a fragmented space either I, I, I tell my space that you get better be defragment and then I have a contiguous space so while in the running system after every some, some instance of time you defragment the system and make all the available space in a contiguous fashion but you see that will be a very hectic and a time taking, taking process which will make the system slow in a continuous running environment so what is better that we say the process you better allocate in a non-contiguous fashion so now what we tell the process then instead of going contiguous memory allocation we follow what non-contiguous policy which is nothing but what paging or segmentation there could be two types we'll understand where the process is divided into some partitions and then they can be allocated to different different spaces there we understand that address translation will be a very difficult job to do because the process will be fragmented so you you have to understand that where that particular part currently is in the main memory so that you can translate that logical address into physical address so in the next video I'll start with non-contiguous policy and we'll understand paging in depth thank you